Hey everyone, so uh, like I said in my last video, I'm going to basically make a video about the possible options of what we're going to do with this tank. Um, so originally this was a macroalgae and seahorse tank and it just didn't work out for us. Um, we were so limited on the cleanup crew that um, the green hair algae was really able to take over. Um, we couldn't just put any cleanup crew member in there because then they might eat the algae that um, that we were actually trying to grow in this tank. Um, so uh, a little background is this 60 gallon cube is tied into my 240 through a 75 gallon sump. And we, or I'm, I'm done with uh, all the green hair algae in this tank. So we're putting uh, we're putting some efforts in to just really get it cleaned up, and then we might, uh, or then we're going to basically change the theme. It's no longer going to be seahorses and macroalgae. So um, I got three options here for what I can do with this tank. All right, and I want to know what your thoughts are on it. The first thought is probably the simplest, requires the least amount of work. And that is to take the five mangroves that are growing in the back wall. You can see their roots hanging down. Move them more into the middle and continue to let their roots just kind of like anchor into the sand. And it will make this like prop root, you know, mangrove swamp kind of thing. Um, and I thought it'd be really cool to put a bunch of Bangai Cardinals in there. Um, Bangai Cardinals would love hanging out in like a prop root system. So... Um, Thought that would be cool. It wouldn't be too expensive. You know, just basically buy a handful of Bangai Cardinals and call it a day. And then throw a whole bunch of, you know, classic cleanup uh, crew members. Um, you know, Turbo Snails. Um, what are the other ones? The Trochus Snails. I always like those. We'll get some Nazaria Snails in here. Um, and, you know, whatever algae survives, cool. Um, whatever doesn't, you know, no big loss. It probably wouldn't fit in with what we're trying to do. Um, but, so yeah, basically it's a prop root system with Bangai Cardinals is option number one. Option number two would, pr it's probably my favorite, um, but it's probably the most amount of tr uh, change in this tank. And that is... Uh, an aggressive anemone, aggressive fish tank. And I know we'd be limited by the size of the tank on what fish we get, but I think there are some cool aggressive fish that would go well in this, you know, in an aggressive anemone tank of this size. So basically I'd like to get a whole collection of rock flower anemones, get like a carpet anemone, <clears throat> um, and we can put some like maroon clownfish, maybe some of those lightning maroon clownfish in there. And like a neon dotty back. I think it would be cool to add like a dwarf flame angel. However, I have to look up whether this tank would even be big enough for a dwarf flame angel. This is 60 gallons. Um, I could easily see them needing more. Um, but I'll, I'll look it up. And uh, if, it's, if it seems feasible, then we can count the dwarf flame angel in for this. Um... But yeah, that way, you know, it's just, you can feed heavy in the tank. The anemones will kind of clean up all the waste, uh, keep that neon dotty back, you know, as docile as possible with the, with the large feedings. I don't think large feedings will be a trouble. I'm still battling really, really low nitrates. Uh, I've been dosing nitrate and it hasn't really been doing much for me. So yeah, um, I think it would be cool to do the, um, do the anemone uh, aggressive fish tank. Now they'd have to be little aggressive fish, so a bunch of fish with the Napoleon complex. Uh, we'll call it the Napoleon tank. So option number two is the Napoleon tank. Um, option number three would be a non-photosynthetic tank. Uh, so I really like non-photosynthetic corals. I've kept them in the past. And the thing is, I just don't know if I want to worry about the daily feedings um, for the NPS corals. And you got to feed them at night because they tend to only open up right after the lights go out, which means basically at like 10 p.m. every day, you got to be ready to feed your non photosynthetic corals. However, there is one really cool concept that goes along with the non photosynthetic corals for this tank, 
And that's because this 60 gallon shares a sump with this 240 gallon. I could take the drain from this cube and have it bypass the skimmer and refugium chambers of the sump and have it feed directly into the return pump chamber, in which case, when you feed heavy coral food in this 60 gallon, what goes down the drain will end up being pumped into the 240 and serve to feed the 240 corals as well. So there's that kind of plus side to it. You know, basically every time I went to feed the corals, I would just feed really heavy in the 60. The NPS corals would get to eat, and then their whatever doesn't get eaten will get put into the 240, a much bigger system, and it will be hopefully the equivalent of just a regular feeding for a 240-gallon tank. Um, but yeah, so... I, I do like the NPS idea. I think the Napoleon tank is probably my favorite. I think the Bangai one would have a really unique look to it. So basically, I want to hear your thoughts on it. And uh, also, option four is viewer's choice. So let me know if you can come up with a cool theme for this tank, uh, something I haven't mentioned. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, we're trying to keep most of the equipment the same and um, it is tied into a 240 gallon tank that is a typical reef system and that's not going to change i don't have room to add another sump to this so um so yeah let me know what your thoughts are uh thanks for watching hit subscribe you know stay updated with this transition and what you know what's going on with the whole build as a whole um you know and yeah so thanks for watching everybody